Hello, welcome to Zebra BI for Power BI product update. The new versions of Zebra BI visuals are live and we are excited to show you all the new features and improvements. Now let's dive right in. Now let's move to the main part of this release, the Zebra BI cards. With Zebra BI cards, you now have more options with value display. In addition to the variances, you can now also show the main comparison metrics, either in the global settings or on the single card by the left mouse clicks on the secondary labels. You can display only the main metrics or any combination with the variances. Let me show you how. So for the global settings, you can go into the card settings and under show variance, you now have all the possible combinations. So we can switch between relative, absolute variance, you can go to both variances, or you can switch to a main number and both variances, right? And this will display now also the main metrics, and you can combine any uh, or all choices here. You can also turn it off completely, right? Now, for the single card metrics, you can go into each and individual card and simply click on the va variance to switch between all the possible options um, just with a single mouse click. This new addition provides your decision makers with even more insights within the actionable KPI cards visual and your report developers more flexibility when and where they want to present uh, certain numbers. Of course, in combination with the other design options here, you can also hide the main KPA value and showcase only the comparison values and so on. When you need to follow more performance indicators at the same time, or you want to simply tell the viewers more about what you're tracking, it helps when you provide additional information about individual KPIs. That is why we have added a KPI description placeholder that you can simply drop in your description field from the KPI dimension, and you can use this to provide an explanation on the title mouse over. And with this version, the KPI description also work with the trends. So now you should have full support of the KPI descriptions on the column or KPI titles. Hopefully, this feature will provide more clarity for everyone looking at your KPIs. To allow better visual grouping of cards, or to simply highlight a single card, we have added additional highlight options for the cards. Let's see how to use them. So first, now you can highlight individual cards by going into the focus mode. And here you will find a new setting that's called the card highlight. You simply click on it and you can then select a color or you can use the color picker and then you simply click save and this will actually add a line next to the card. Now if you go back to the report, we'll see that we now have um, the same group uh, with the same color. You can also highlight individual elements in the categories, same as you can in the charts. So for instance, if you want to highlight this good month, you simply right click, September and highlight it. This feature should make it easier to draw attention to specific elements and allow visual indication for cards belonging to the same group for your viewers. Within the global card settings, you now have more customization options. We have added the global label settings in the data label section. So now you can just simply switch to, to any sort of format that you have here, um, and it will apply directly to all cards. Next, you can also turn off the scale group modification for the end users in the interaction settings. So as you know, you can apply scale groups with the second icon of the card, but if you want to simply prevent that for the end users, you can go into the interaction controls now and simply turn it off. And once you publish the report, the this second icon will not be available to the um, and users. This setting should prevent unwanted interaction for viewers and make global formatting easier for report creators. With the global format settings, we have also added basis points format support for cards, both globally and for individual cards. 
let's see where to find the settings. So let's go into the format pane and under data labels, let's switch to the percentage. And now we can use the use basis points format. So we simply toggle it on and we now have the basis points format. We can also choose between the, some predefined names or we can also define our own custom uh, format in here. For individual cards, we simply go into the focus mode and here you will find now that you have the option to switch between, for the percentage um, cards, to switch between the basis point format with a toggle and then you can also control how many basis point or percentage point decimals there are. Once you're done, you can simply move back. For everyone using basis points in communication, for instance, market shares and for margin changes in bigger establishments, this provides a better understanding of the changes. In order to prioritize your KPIs by order of the biggest movers, either in the positive or negative way, we have also added multiple sorting options for cards. Let's check them out. So in order to apply the sorting options, you first need to switch from the custom um, or freeform uh, sorting uh, layout to either the rows layout or the uniform layout from the global toolbar at the top. So if we switch to the rows layout here, we now have the default sorting applied. We can also go to the custom sorting here, but then we have additional automatic sorting options. So either by relative or absolute variance, by the main value, or alphabetically by the title. So let's check them out. So if we select relative or um, any other of the value options, we now have the option to select by which of the comparisons we want to sort. So for either previous year, plan or forecast, and relative variance in this case. So we can select the plan variance. We can also uh, determine either we want to sort ascendingly or descendingly, uh, depending on the situation here. So the same goes for the absolute variance. We can simply select to show the biggest movers in either the positive or negative way um, in this regard. And we can also do the same for the values, right? And in this case, uh, we, we can also choose by which values we want to sort, of course. Um, and in the end, we also have the title selection, so we can um, choose either ascendingly or descendingly to sort uh, the title. The thing goes for the uniform layout, and we can just simply apply uh, the sorting as we did before. So we simply select the absolute variance here, and if we then choose by either ascendingly or descendingly, the cards in the background will sort accordingly. This new sorting feature should provide you even more clarity on which items require your attention and guide you towards necessary actions. We've added a new setting for individual cards called the reset to default. So for instance, if we want to make some changes to a particular card, but then we want to apply the global settings again, right? We can simply go into the focus mode of the card apply the different settings, for instance, invert and, and switch the chart here and maybe break the y-axis, but then we decide we want to apply the global settings again, right? So if we try to change the global settings now from here and switch to an area chart or column chart or what's for chart, you'll see that the, the individually formatted cards will stay the same. Now, if we want to go back to the original state of the card, we can simply go into the focus mode again, and here you will find this reset to default button, which actually reverts back to the original state. Now, again, we can simply invert the costs here, and the global settings will be applied across uh, the entire card's visual. With Table 6.0, we changed the infrastructure to drastically improve the performance for hierarchical tables. With that, however, we had to somewhat compromise ragged hierarchy handling. Let me explain. 
As you know, Zebra BI tables up to version 6.0 fully supported ragged hierarchies, meaning that if you have the element of the same name across hierarchies, it would be consolidated into one element. In our case, we have the growth margin here, which is also present in the account group and account hierarchy levels. However, with the new faster infrastructure, there was a limitation that prevented seeing other elements that might be named differently deeper in the hierarchy. So if we had multiple hierarchy levels below this one, we simply could not expand those to see them. That is why we decided in this first step to turn off this consolidation of elements in order for you to still be able to access those elements with drill down. So now in the new tables, you can simply expand to the level below it, right? This removes a layer of complexity in the background and allows you to show all elements regardless of the parent element naming. We know, however, that for some users, the consolidation of elements is also important and you can expect improvements to this in the following releases. Next, we notice that in some cases, columns formatted as percent weren't handled correctly. We're glad to inform you that this has now been amended and we've also improved the report page tooltip behavior with Zero BI custom calculated rows. Now let's go over the details. As you can see, the rounding issues have been fixed for both custom columns and main comparison columns between percentage values. So even if we go into the custom columns and change the decimal places now, the rounding will be correct. The same increase and the same can be said for the main comparison values if we change the decimal places the rounding is correct as for the tooltips on custom rows now show the default power bi tooltip instead of displaying the values for the standard rows so when we hover over the standard rows we see the report page tooltip but once you move to the custom rows the default tooltip will apply. And this holds through across the entire visual. With these improvements, all your percentage measure formats should now be displayed as expected, and the tooltip reference should now be perfectly clear to all users. Moving on, we're continuing our effort to improve the interactivity and adjustments of settings directly on the visuals. Let me show you the two features that have been added to the tables. So first, you are now able to adjust the titles directly on the title. You simply click on the drop down menu and now you can uh, select the color. Um, you can also change the font settings um, in the title directly, also increase the sizes, and so on. And secondly, you now have the ability to control the on visual common box uh, settings directly through the drop down here. So we can also add a drop shadow. Uh, you can change the variance display directly on the visual instead of in the global settings. As mentioned in our previous update, we believe these gradual improvements make the UX much friendlier, as you don't have to search for every specific setting in the global settings, and it is much clearer what it is that you are adjusting. With Zebra BI charts, we have made a small, but in my opinion, a very nice quality of life improvement with the comment box. Let me show you. So now, when you're entering the comments into the comments placeholder, the comment box will automatically appear, and the same if we remove them, it will automatically hide. So if we just bring it back, then you can play around with the comments directly on the visuals, resize the comment box, uh, add, access the comment box settings, and so on. Another small addition is the ability to highlight grand totals in column charts. So if you want to highlight it, you just simply right click on that category here and check the check box. Small changes can make a big difference in how much we enjoy the tools we use. And this change has certainly improved my experience and I hope it does yours as well. We have improved the positioning of the comments for result columns of waterfall charts. So if we check the chart on the screen, we can see that the comment markers are now nicely displayed within the result column and below or above the rest of the waterfall columns. 
we will be focusing on comment and waterfall improvements across all our products in the near future. However, this first iteration should already improve the visibility of comments for your end users. We have included all the different highlight information in the tooltips. So if we now look at the screen and hover over with our mouse over the different results, we will now see all the information about the changes from the previous result. Hopefully, this change will make the waterfall chart insights even more valuable when making important decisions. Last but not least, we've migrated the treat nulls as zeros setting from the charts to the cards visual. So now you will find it in the card settings, and it's a simple toggle treat nulls as zeros, and this allows you to provide greater understanding of performance when comparing to zero values. So, for instance, if you have some plans and there were zero values or you hadn't uh, achieved some sales in the previous year, but you've added a new item, you can now also showcase this. Thank you for watching our product update. We already have exciting upgrades planned for the next release, so stay tuned to our social media channels for all the latest news. You can also check the changelog on our website for the complete list of features for this release. Thank you for your support and see you in the next update.